Hello friends, David Marks here with an updated Adobe Photoshop Lightroom for mobile video tutorial. In the last tutorial, I talked about how Adobe Creative Cloud subscribers can synchronize collections from our desktop Lightroom catalog over to all of our mobile devices using the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom for mobile app. In this video, I'm going to dig into the opposite. So here I am inside of my iPad. If I go into the iPad's camera roll, then you can see that there are indeed a handful of photos and a couple of video clips that I have shot with this device. Android users, change the word camera roll to photo gallery, and you'll see the same thing. The camera roll or photo gallery is the device's native photo storage system and viewer. Anyway, if I go into the Lightroom mobile app, then you'll immediately see the new Organize Home screen. There are two sections on this screen right now. At the top is an area that says Lightroom Photos. This area is like the All Photos choice in your desktop Lightroom catalog. If I tap here, then you can see everything that my Photoshop Lightroom for mobile app is currently synchronizing with this device. But this is all old stuff and not the point of today's lesson. To import new images, images that were shot on this iPad, I'm going to go back to the Organize Home screen. If you want to add those images that you saw a minute ago in the camera roll, then all you'd have to do is tap the camera roll button down here at the bottom of the screen. Android users, you have the same thing, but your button is actually labeled Add Photos. But wait, before we press this button and bring in any new images, let's make a few quick changes in the Preferences menu for this app. To find the Preferences menu in Lightroom for Mobile, tap on the little LR letters up there in the top left on iOS, or the three little bar symbol that's in the same spot in the Android interface. When you tap here, a menu will appear. The look of this menu differs slightly from iOS to Android, but if you hunt around a little Android folks, you will discover that they are very, very similar. On an iOS device, like this iPad, Let's start in the general setting. Android users, you'll find most of these settings after you tap on the Preferences button within this menu. At the top on iOS, there is an Auto Add Photos switch that you can enable. If you turn this one on, then Lightroom for Mobile will automatically import anything that you shoot using the default camera app on this device from now on. To be clear, this switch does not instantly bring in all of your old mobile snaps. I'm gonna leave this one turned off, but remember it's there on Android devices. There is also a menu that appears in here after you've enabled this one, which allows you to specify which file formats Lightroom Mobile should automatically import. On iOS, we don't get a file format preference switch, but don't worry. Lightroom for Mobile on iOS can import any type of file that your iPad or iPhone can create except for the unique Apple Live Photos format. Working our way down the screen, I'm going to enable the Add Copyright switch. Android users, you'll find this one. And the next thing I'm going to enable inside of the Photo Import Options section. In here, I'm going to set Lightroom for Mobile so that it will automatically add my name and the year into the appropriate metadata field for any image that this app imports. Finally. I'm going to enable the Lens Profile Correction option and set it for all files. Enabling this option tells Lightroom Mobile to automatically repair some of the lens vignetting and geometric distortions that we so often see in our smartphone images. I must add here that the brilliant folks at Adobe have not profiled every single smartphone on the market. The good folks at Adobe have already built lens profiles for most common mobile devices, like the iPhone, Samsung Galaxy S phone, the Google Pixel phones, but there may not be a lens correction profile available yet for any device that you are currently using. If you are setting things up on a device like an iPhone that offers both cellular and Wi-Fi connectivity, then there's one more switch in these preference menus that you might want to change. Unless you have an unlimited data plan, I strongly suggest making the sync only over Wi-Fi option your default setting so that you don't have to worry about this app queuing up your data allowance. We can close this menu now and return to the Organize Home screen. 
Again, you could hit the camera roll button at the bottom at this point or the add photos for Android, but hang on. If you were to import images from your device's camera roll or photo galleries right now, then those images would be added to the Lightroom Photos grouping up here at the top only. This Lightroom Photos grouping shows us everything. That's all of the photos that Lightroom for Mobile is indexing. But finding a particular image in here is difficult. Sure, you could filter through this grid using star rating or the image's pick flag status. But there is no keyword, map module, or text search ability in here yet. The lack of keywords or text search tools is a huge limitation and one that I hope Adobe solves soon. But for now, here's my advice. For now, collection membership is the best organizational tool that we have to keep things tidy inside of Lightroom for mobile. So I'm gonna tap this arrow and go back. Instead of just adding images into the Lightroom Photos grouping, I urge you to use collections whenever you are importing images from your device's photo galleries. I'm gonna tap on this little plus over here to create a new collection for this import. By default, Lightroom suggests naming this new collection with the current time and date, but I think that we can do better. Unless today's date is something really memorable for you, something like New Year's Eve, Christmas, or your birthday, then what good will a collection whose name is today's date do for you as an organizational tool five years down the road? My advice is that you give your collection some sort of meaningful name. In this case, I'm gonna name this collection Hummingbirds at Feeder. I'm gonna give it this name because that's what I was photographing this morning with this device. Now, I'm gonna tap on the three little dots button to the right of the new collection's name. Next, I'm gonna choose the Add Photos option so that the images that I'm about to import become part of this grouping from the moment that they enter Lightroom. At this point, you could tap on each and every one of these photos on every one that you want to import one by one by one. Or you could get clever and tap on that three little dots button in the top right again, and then use the select all option to save yourself a whole lot of effort. In this case, I'm going to tap on those dots again, and then choose the deselect all option because I want to show you another trick. On iOS devices, you can use the two finger push out move to change the size of these thumbnails. I don't think you can do this on the Android version of the app yet, but don't worry, it's not essential. Anyway, sometimes it's much easier to find the photos that you want to import, say only your best shots, when you can see a lot more detail in here. Expanding the thumbnail size makes it easier to see the good from the bad. Let me show you another trick. I'm gonna use the two finger pinch in move to make these thumbnails as small as I can. This time, I'm gonna press and hold my finger against the screen on top of the first image that I wanna import. Without lifting my finger, I'm gonna to swipe to the right and to the left to include all of these images too. The push, hold, and swipe trick is often a much easier way to select a whole block of files than tapping on them one by one. Let me tap on the three little dots and choose deselect all one more time. Last trick, on iOS devices, if you press and hold on a single image long enough, then another menu will appear. In this menu, I'm gonna choose the select range option. Now, all I have to do is tap on the last of the hummingbird shots and Lightroom will automatically select from A, the first one, all the way to B, the one I just tapped on for me. That was easy. Obviously, the last step then in this import process is to tap the add button down at the bottom of the screen. Now, Lightroom for mobile will start importing all of these photos for me and it will add them into the new Hummingbirds at Feeder collection. In addition, 
as these images are added into the app, they will get my copyright info and a lens correction will be applied to them if I'm working on a profile device. If I wanted to, I could go back and repeat this process, making a new collection and then choosing the right files for those random flower shots that are also in my iPad's camera roll. But I think you get the idea. There are two things that I need to point out right now. First, I need to make it clear that importing these images into Lightroom Mobile does not remove them automatically from the device's camera roll. On the one hand, this is great because I can still get to these photos using another app on this device. On the other hand, having the same images in two places takes up more memory and it gets cumbersome when you start editing your images within Lightroom Mobile. I'll talk more about this though in my next tutorial, so let's not get bogged down on this one for now. Instead, Let's talk about where the images that we just imported are going to go once they get added into your Lightroom catalog on your laptop or desktop computer. For that, let me switch over to my desktop computer. Okay, so here I am inside of my Lightroom catalog. The very first thing that I'm gonna do is to click up here on the identity plate or progress bar area in the top left corner of the library module and temporarily switch mobile syncing off. This one is a little confusing. Sync is off when you see the word pause and the little play triangle. Sync is on when you see the pause symbol. I'm pausing the syncing here just so that I can set a few preferences and then I'll turn it back on. To find the preferences that relate to Lightroom for mobile, we need to go into the preferences menu. Windows users, you will find your preferences under the edit menu command and then down to preferences. On a Mac, we go Lightroom preferences. Once we're into the preferences menu, let's head right over to the Lightroom mobile tab. In this tab, I recommend turning on the prevent system sleep during sync option. This one tells Lightroom to try to keep your computer awake while it's transferring data back and forth with Adobe servers. Next, since I'm a stickler for file organization, I also recommend turning on the specify location for Lightroom mobile images option. Once you enable this switch, I suggest pressing the choose button and then guiding the dialog that appears to your top level image storage folder. Those of you who have carefully watched my tutorials for years know that I'm talking about my Photos Go Here folder on my primary image storage hard drive at this point. The choice that we are making here controls the destination for our synchronized smartphone images only. And the truth is that if you don't turn this switch on, nothing bad will happen to your mobile images. If you don't turn this one on, then Lightroom will create a folder for you inside of your computer's internal pictures folder to hold your mobile images. That works, but for me, it gets messy. Since I've enabled this switch, I'm also going to enable the Use Subfolders formatted by Capture Date option, and then I'm gonna pick the year slash year dash month dash day all in numbers option. I'm choosing this folder structure for my mobile images since this is exactly the same way that I've trained Lightroom to organize my DSLR images at this point, PC users can press the OK button. Mac users, all that we need to do is to click on the little red circle in the upper left-hand corner to close this window. The final step here is to click back on the identity plate and reactivate the syncing. All I have to do now is to wait for Lightroom Mobile to add the images that I shot with my iPad and imported into my Lightroom catalog here on my desktop computer you can see that they are starting to appear now in the new Hummingbirds at Feeder collection that we just created on the mobile device. You'll find it inside a collection set called From Lightroom Mobile. Now that we have everything set up properly on both the iPad and the computer, it's super easy to sync files back and forth. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna dig deep into how Lightroom Mobile's camera app functions and where this groundbreaking technology really shines. See you 
in our next tutorial.